टू माई चैनल My name is Prachi Sharma and this channel is about learning chemistry for 10th grade ICSC end to end. Now, in the previous session we worked on detection of cations and today's session we'll be working on the detection of anions. A lot of students had doubts in analytical chemistry, so if you are still one of those who is not able to figure out, make sure that you check out the previous video and continue on this one. In this particular video, we'll work on the basic understanding, uh, the equations, the different types of gases, what's their unique characteristic, and we'll also work on few important questions for you today. So, let's get started. All right, students, let's get started with the video. So, this chapter is on an uh, anion detection. Uh, we'll be discussing how the equations are working, uh, what are we reacting your anionic salt, that is your acid radical with, and then we move on. So, let's get started with the first one. So, acid radicals, we can divide that into mainly three categories. That is the first one, which you are reacting with dilute sulfuric acids. The second is concentrated sulfuric acid. And the third is neither uh, concentrated nor dilute sulfuric acid. So, reacting with something else. Now, let's move on to the first one that is dilute sulfuric acid. So, for dilute sulfuric acid, the options that we have, we have carbonate, sulfide and sulfide. Okay. So, these three can be detected when you are reacting um, your acid radical that is your carbonate, sulfide and sulfide. The next is concentrated sulfuric acid. You have two options there that is chloride and nitrate. Then for the last one, that is neither dilute nor concentrated sulfuric acid, you have sulfate. Okay. Along with this, I have also done the hydrogen detection. So, um, you can also check that out towards the end of the video. So, let's get started with the first one. So, we'll work on dilute sulfuric acid first, then concentrated and then the last one. In every portion, we'll also be understanding the unique characteristic of the gas or the product that is made. And all of those unique characteristics are important for you to learn. So, let's get started with the first one. So, the first one is carbonate. Okay. So, we are starting with dilute sulfuric acid. The first is detection of carbonate. So, if you have a metallic carbonate and you are reacting that with dilute sulfuric acid, you get a gas that is a colorless odorless gas is evolved with brisk effervescence which turns lime water milky. So, if you understand this lime water milky concept, so this particular gas is carbon dioxide gas, okay, CO2, which is right here. Now, make sure that you also take a couple of examples because that helps you understand it better and in the exam also, you'll be able to give an example if you have studied example. So, let's look at the first one. So, you have sodium carbonate reacting with H2SO4 dilute giving you Na2SO4, water and carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide is reacting with lime water right here, giving you a white PPT that is CaCO3, which, give, which turns lime water milky. This white PPT turns it milky and H2O along with that. Now, next is detection of sulfide, ITE. Now, sulfide, you have metallic sulfide reacting with dilute sulfuric acid. Now, in this case, you have to make sure that you pay attention on the gas. A colorless gas having burning sulfur smell evolves, which turns acidified potassium dichromate solution from orange to green. You have to remember that acidified potassium dichromate solution from orange to green and potassium permanganate from purple to colorless or it decolorizes potassium permanganate solution. So, potassium permanganate solution from purple to colorless. What is this gas? This is SO2, sulfur dioxide. For every gas, unique characteristics are very, very important for you to able to understand what they are giving you in the question. Okay. So, again, metallic sulfide reacting with dilute sulfuric acid gives you SO2. What is the characteristic of SO2? Unique or you can say burning sulfur smell, the first characteristic. And how can you confirm this? Sometimes in the question, they'll say this gas has a burning sulfur smell. Give one confirmation test for this gas. So, first you'll name the gas 
and your confirmation test can be any one of the given, two given here that is you can mention it turns acidified potassium dichromate from orange to green or you can say potassium permanganate solution from purple to colorless okay let's look at an example so you have Na2SO3 that is your sodium sulfide reacting with dilute sulfuric acid giving you Na2SO4 plus water plus SO2. Now, every the, now next two equations are not so important but I have still mentioned that because some of you students might be preparing for international exams or national level olympiads. So for them this is important. So, so the first one is potassium dichromate that is your K2Cr2O7 reacting with SO2 plus H2SO4 gives you K2SO4 plus chromium sulfate and this chromium sulfate is green in color okay and the next one is your potassium permanganate K, uh, KMnO4 plus water plus SO2 giving you K2SO4 plus MnSO4 plus H2SO4 okay so earlier it was purple now it is no color is mentioned so it is colorless all right moving on to the third one that is detection of sulfide okay metallic sulfide reacts with dilute sulfuric acid and gives you a characteristic a gas with characteristic of a rotten egg smell so rotten egg smell right here rotten egg smell evolved which turns lead acetate solution black again so your characteristic would be rotten egg smell colorless and rotten egg smell and your confirmation test would be lead acetate paper uh, lead acetate solution turns black okay let's look at the uh, example so you have FES reacting with H2SO4 dilute giving you FeSO4 plus H2S. This is the gas that is your colorless uh, rotten egg smell hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay. Then in the next one again, this uh, the next equation is not so important. This is lead acetate reacting with H2S giving you a PBS that is black, uh, black PPT that is turning your lead acetate to black. Now, the next part is your next column that was concentrated sulfuric acid column. In concentrated sulfuric acid, we have two detections. The first is detection of chloride. So, metallic chloride reacting with concentrated sulfuric acid is giving you a colorless gas having pungent suffocating smell which fumes in moist air. This is important for you to remember. It fumes in moist air because you can have other gases also which have pungent suffocating smell but this gas, this particular gas fumes in moist air. What gas is this? This is HCl gas, hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, so pungent suffocating smell and fumes in moist air, hydrogen chloride gas. Now let's look at other characteristics which gives white PPT with silver nitrate solution which is soluble in excess ammonium hydroxide and dense white fumes with ammonium hydroxide. Now this test was also discussed in your chapter HCl. So if you want to understand more details of this, please make sure that you go ahead and check out the HCl video. Alright okay. students, let's move ahead to the examples for this. That is NaCl plus H2SO4 giving us NaHSO4 plus HCl. So this was also uh, in the HCl chapter again. Then the test for HCl gas was that you reacted with silver nitrate. This, uh, these equations you can do of course. Uh, reacting with HCl giving you AgCl that is silver chloride which is the white PPT. Okay. And the other test was that you, um, you have AgCl reacting with NH4OH. You get diamine silver chloride which is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. And another one was um, with ammonium hydroxide HCl gas gives dense white fumes. This test is generally given as a glass rod dipped in ammonium hydroxide is brought near a jar containing HCl gas. So you get dense white fumes. Okay. Now let's move on to the second part of it. That is detection of nitrate. So a metallic nitrate reacting with concentrated sulfuric acid in the presence of copper turnings. This is important for you to remember. In the presence of copper turnings gives you a reddish brown gas which has pungent suffocating smell okay so now the previous gas was also pungent suffocating this is also pungent suffocating the different characteristic for the previous one was it 
uh, fumes in moisture and for this one is that it is reddish brown in color okay so you have to remember these reddish brown pungent suffocating smell and what gas is this this is nitrogen dioxide so this gas is nitrogen dioxide which turns freshly prepared acidified ferrous sulfate solution brown black okay now let's look at the equation so you have kno3 plus h2so4 giving you giving us khso4 plus hno3 this hno3 reacts with copper turnings that you have in and it gives you cuno3 whole twice plus water plus no2 gas okay so i hope that makes sense to you then moving ahead to the next one so this is the test that we were talking about you have uh, ferrous sulfate reacting with no2 and you get nitroferrous sulfate okay now we are coming on the last portion that was not concentrated or dilute sulfuric acid so in this case we are talking about sulfate ion so in this case if you start with metallic sulfate reacting with barium chloride it gives you a white ppt which is insoluble in all all mineral acids and what is this white ppt that is barium sulfate so metallic sulfate reacting with barium chloride so double decomposition reaction happens you get barium sulfate okay so this barium sulfate is insoluble in mineral acids so bacl2 plus na2so4 gives you baso4 plus nacl so this is the white ppt that we are talking about that is insoluble in mineral acids okay now another thing i told you that i have also mentioned detection of hydrogen gas so that is what we are doing in this part any active metal that you have you react it with a dilute acid and you end up getting a colorless and odorless gas which burns with a pop sound so that pop sound is unique characteristic about hydrogen gas any where in the question paper you see uh, a gas burning with a pop sound that is hydrogen gas students make sure you remember that now let's move on to the next part so you have an example that is an active metal magnesium reacting with hcl gives you mgcl2 plus hydrogen gas okay let's move on to the next part now in the next part to make your learning a bit easier i have made a chart for you so that your detection is easy for you okay you do you find it easy and uh, it's not difficult to remember it so this is a chart that i have made i hope it is clear to you you can pause it right here and take a screenshot anyways i will still be attaching these notes in the comment in the description box below okay so let's understand what's happening in this chart so if you see i have the radical names uh, radical names mentioned in the first column these then in the second one what is the reaction with so i have mentioned dilute h2so4 or concentrated h2so4 or neither h2so4 and concentrated or dilute then in the observation i have given the unique characteristic of the gas and then what is the name in the product that is what is the gas or the product coming out because sometimes you also you are also getting a white ppt that is for the hydrogen uh, for the sulfate one you are getting barium sulfate which has a white ppt so that is the reason the name of the product now let's look at the first one so carbonate reacting with dilute h2so4 gives you a colorless odorless gas which turns lime water milky the gas is carbon dioxide gas okay then for sulfite ite dilute h2so4 burning sulfur smell what is the gas sulfur dioxide gas then sulfide ide reacting with dilute h2so4 gives us a rotten egg smell gas that is hydrogen sulfide gas then chloride reacting with concentrated h2so4 uh, giving us a pungent suffocating smell that is hydrogen chloride gas and what was the other character other unique characteristic about this was uh, that it fumes in moisture okay so that is there hydrogen chloride gas then nitrate now this goes with concentrated h2so4 and along with that you have copper turnings remember that this gives you a pungent suffocating smell gas smelling gas but that is reddish brown in color so what gas are we talking about we're talking about no2 nitrogen dioxide gas then next is sulfate this is reacting with barium chloride 
which gives you a white ppt which is insoluble in mineral acids what are we talking about we talking about barium sulfate students barium sulfate now this is the first chart that i wanted you to remember then the next chart that i have is of all the gases and what is their color and what is their odor so this will help you in a lot of questions carbon dioxide is a colorless gas and odorless gas correct sulfur dioxide is colorless but the smell is burning sulfur smell then rotten egg smell should be hydrogen sulfide pungent suffocating smell which fumes in moist air so this particular gas is hydrogen chloride then pungent suffocating red color is nitrogen dioxide odorless and colorless is hydrogen which burns with a pop sound then pungent irritating smell which is also colorless is ammonia okay so these gases i have written all of them together because it becomes easier for you to remember them and revise them during the exams so now is the time to get started with some important questions okay students i hope the questions are visible on the screen now so these are some important questions that may come from the portion that we have just covered so let's understand these questions and i'll see how we can answer them so the question says identify the anion present in the following compounds so make sure that you read the question carefully they are asking the anion present now let's start with the first part of it compound x on heating with copper turnings and concentrated sulfuric acid liberates a reddish brown gas so what is the reddish brown gas that we studied that was no2 correct that was nitrogen dioxide but they are not asking the gas okay they are asking what is compound x and they are not even asking the salt of it they are just asking the anion okay so what anion that would be that would be nitrate okay no3 minus 1 so i'll just write it here so this is no3 minus 1 the next is compound z on reacting with dilute sulfuric acid liberates a gas which turns lime water milky but the gas has no effect on acidified potassium dichromate so what is the gas so lime water milky that would be carbon dioxide and what will be the compound z that would be carbonate ion so co3 minus 2 let me write that here co3 minus 2 the next is compound l on reacting with barium chloride gives a white ppt insoluble in dilute hydrochloric acid and dilute nitric acid so this means a white ppt which is insoluble in mineral acids so this may what does this mean this means we are talking about the last one that we did and what was that that was sulfate ion so sulfate so4 2 minus now the next is state one chemical test between each of the following pairs sodium carbonate and sodium sulfide so that is interesting if you come on this chart again so they are talking about carbonate and sulfide right let me just read the question once again it is carbonate and sulfide yeah right so now if you come back on the chart they are talking about carbonate and sulfide right here so what you can say is add dilute h2so4 to both of them one of them will give you carbon dioxide gas and give the observation for carbon dioxide gas in the answer and one of them will give you sulfur dioxide gas and also mention the characteristic about sulfur dioxide gas okay so that will be your test the next is compound a on reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid produces a colorless odorless gas b with brisk effervescence identify the gas b okay now you have to remember that when we talk about these uh, acid uh, radicals it's not necessary that they are always reacting with h2so4 so whatever we said dilute h2so4 that is also valid for dilute hcl they can also react with dilute hcl correct so when we are talking about this particular question compound a on reaction with dilute hcl produces a colorless odorless gas so and they are saying brisk effervescence this brisk effervescence is another unique characteristic for carbon dioxide gas okay so this particular in this particular case identify the gas b is carbon dioxide gas so co2 gas 
Another important thing for you students is that the formula that I just wrote, CO2, is not an acceptable answer. You're supposed to write carbon dioxide gas in the exam. The next is identify anion in compound X. So what anion do we get when we have CO2? The anion is carbonate. Okay, so C carbonate. The next is give confirmatory test for the gas B. So the confirmatory test would be that it turns lime water milky. Okay, and then you can mention the equation for lime water. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. Let me just uh, mark the equation that you're supposed to write here. So you'll have, you'll be writing the equation from the carbonate one that is right here, this particular equation. So this is your confirmatory test for carbon dioxide gas. CO2 with lime water gives a white PPT, which of course turns lime water milky and also write a sentence with it. Just don't write the equation and leave it. Write a sentence that carbon dioxide gas turns lime water milky and that is your confirmatory test. Then moving on to the last question. Okay, students, I hope the last question is visible on the screen. So uh, the first part of it is says a colorless odorless gas which turns lime water milky. So that gas is carbon dioxide gas CO2. Sorry, not this one, the above one. CO2. The next they say a colorless gas having burning sulfur smell. So burning sulfur smell is sulfur dioxide SO2. Then we have a colorless gas having rotten egg smell. So that is hydrogen sulfide. So H2S. A colorless gas which fumes in moist air is HCl gas. Then a reddish brown colored gas having pungent suffocating smell is nitrogen dioxide NO. All right, students. So this was it for today's session. I hope today's session was interesting for you and you were able to understand a lot of concepts. Plus, I hope you were able to answer the questions that we discussed towards the end of the session. So if you are new to this channel, please make sure that you like, subscribe and make sure that you tell me in the comment section if there's anything in particular you would like me to cover up for you and if you're finding some difficulties in chemistry. You can also join the Telegram channel and reach out to me directly there because I do post some notes once in a while on that channel. So make sure that you like, subscribe and share this channel further and help us move forward. So thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day ahead.